It's good to see you this morning. You glad to be here? Amen. amen, amen. I'd rather be here than in jail or the hospital, wouldn't you? Or homesick. We do have several folks out sick today. We'll pray for them. And uh, thankful you're here. We do have some first-time visitors here. On my right over here is a, a couple moving to the Cottageville area right here on my right. We'll meet them in just a few moments and uh, glad to have them here. And so y'all be real nice to them today, okay? First impression means a lot, all right? And, uh, but anyway, we're going to sing number 200, uh, we're going to sing number 94 in just a minute. You need to get you a good breath, okay, because that's a pretty fast song, okay? But before we sing, we're going to pray and ask God to bless the service. Our Heavenly Father, it sure is good to be here once again on this Sunday morning. And Lord, I do pray that you'll help those who, Lord, who could not be here today because of things beyond their control. Some are sick, Lord, some having problems in their life, dear Lord, they're having to deal with today. We sure pray for them, dear God, that you'll help them. Lord, I ask you now to bless the service once again. We need to hear from heaven, and Lord, we need some help. And God, you're the only one who really can help us, and so we pray that you'll help us today. Bless all that goes on. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Number 94, let's all stand and sing. Number 94. Remain standing. Let's turn over to page 281. 281 was saying the first, second, and last of Jesus saves. Amen. Amen.
seated. Aren't you glad he saves? Praise the Lord for that. If he wouldn't, if he didn't save, we'd be in a mess. But I'm glad he does save. Who does he save? He saves lost sinners. He found us lost in our sin. And I'm so thankful that he still saves sinners today. If you're here today and you're not saved, he'll save you if you want him to. And praise God for that. All right. I mentioned our visitors over here on my right. And uh, I'd like for you to meet them. Introduce yourself to us if you don't mind. One of you there. Okay. All right. Mar Margaret and Brad, we're sure glad to have you here today. What a joy it is. Amen. Hope you come back see us real soon. If we can help you in your moving, moving process, we'll be glad to help you. This man on the front row, he's, he's good at moving people. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, he's a plumber by trade. I don't know if he's been up moving business or not. But, <laughs> Seriously, if you need some help, let us know, okay? We'll do what we can to help you. Moving's tough, isn't it? When you have to, when you got a lot of stuff. My wife and I, we first got married, coming off to Bible college, and all, I think we moved eight times in two years, something like that. Of course, that's, that was the first, it was, it, we didn't pack anything up. We just kept it all in boxes. And, uh, but anyway, it's good to have you here. I'm working on some uh, messages about home and marriage, and hopefully sometimes before the summer's over, I'll be able to preach them. This thought came to me while I was sitting today, just in my office a few moments uh, between at Sunday school. It takes three to make a happy, joyful, and loving marriage. Three. Not two, but three. Husband, wife, and Jesus. Both saved, husband and wife both saved, and willing to serve, willing to serve God, willing to serve each other. Outside this, there will, not, there will be no united home. No united marriage. And uh, so some marriages can exist just like some people's lives can exist. You know, they get terminal and they, they, don't, they quit living because the disease eats their body up and they, they live. I mean, they exist. But a marriage is supposed to be a thriving unit. Here's a thank you note from the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. Uh, it says, uh, Dear Welch Creek friends, thank you so much for your love and kindness and help and food for uh, Harold Langdale's family. We always appreciate each of you and your church family. Love Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. Isn't that nice? And we sure appreciate the ladies in our church and maybe some of the men who helped out with that meal as Joanne's brother who went to be the Lord. He was a member there, dedicated member there. All right, some just a few announcements to make. Uh, we have some brand new Sword of the Lord magazines in the foyer. They came in yesterday, so I hope you'll get one on the way out today. I'll right, look through a little bit of it. It's just got some good stuff in it, I'm telling you. Hope you'll get, get it and read it, all right? And then uh, uh, other things coming up. A couple of weeks, we'll be voting on the Christian Man of the Year. Father's Day is coming up. And then, of course, later in the summer, Bible school will be here. We're working on Bible school. That's always a great week. And, and this will start the last Monday in, in July and go through that Friday in August. And so those announcements are in there. I would like for you to uh, uh, take in consideration, we have a lot of clothes left over. From the camp meeting closet, we you know we gave stuff away. We got a lot left over. If you have anything in there that you'd like to have or give away or take back home with you, be sure to do that because we're fixing to uh, ship it out. Okay, and uh, Miss Beth, did you make that phone call? Okay, all right. Uh, you know, Brother Willis them have that home over there, and they have a a, a building set aside just for the stuff people give, and so. Uh, uh, we're going to donate it to them, so you be sure to go in there and get what you might want out of there. Some good stuff in there. I mean, some good clothes, ladies, teenage girls, kids, men. There's a few things there for men, so you be sure to do that, okay? And uh, But anyway, that's all the announcements we have right now, and so the choir is going to sing. Listen very carefully. Thank God bless your heart. <laughs>
I'm glad to have been washed, hadn't you? He sees me worthy. Let's stand up and speak to each other for a few moments. Be sure to speak to our visitors. seats. Hurry. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Amen, amen. That's good. Well, I'm glad he sees me through the blood, don't you? In ourselves, there's nothing good about us in ourselves, but when you get saved, God sees you differently. Amen. People might not see you differently, but God sees you differently. And the order see us differently. Our, our lives will change. If salvation doesn't change your life, I doubt you have it. But I'm glad you sees me through the blood. All right, we have choir practice today at 5 o'clock. We, we have room for others. You'd like to join? Uh, young folks, teenagers, adults, y'all come on and be a part of the choir. And uh, uh, the more the merrier. So I hope you'll have, join that and be a part of the choir. And uh, they, they, they enjoy themselves and hope you'll think about that. Amen. All right, well, so last Sunday was Mother's Day, and, and uh, uh, we gave all, our, <laughs> gave all our mothers tomato plants. I hate to say that in front of these visitors, but we really didn't go all out, you know. But uh, some of you have already had your tomato plant to die, hadn't it? Anybody here of yours has, has died already? Anybody want to raise your hand and say it's already dead? <laughs> no, Miss Helen, not... not, not I'll, I've had more I'll bring. I told you, remember I said I have left more. I'll give you another one tonight. You got plenty in the garden. They live in the ones in the garden. You named it Happy? Well, I'll give you another one. Name it Happy Number Two. Okay. And uh, it's going to be a fun thing for the summer as you go through, okay? And you had to name it, and you needed to take care of it. I talked to Deborah back there. She said she planted hers and had checked on it in a week. So we don't know. And uh, so it'll be a, it'll be a, 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 as we go through the summer, ever, how many get, Miss Williams, what? You named it George. It's grown two inches. George is in heaven. <laughs> and she named her tomato plant after her husband, I think. And so anyway. Oh, my soul. And uh, all right, you'll have some fun with that. The, during the summer, if you get a real big one, you need to bring it so we can weigh it. And you might have the biggest one. Then they'll keep count of how many you get off of it. We got some nice gifts for that at the end of August. So you got all of July and August and rest this month to get things going. Okay, if you didn't get one, we'll have them here tonight. All of them's the same type, same kind. Even Miss Baker's is looking pretty good. Amen. All right. Well, anyway, who had a birthday this past week? Anyone have a birthday? We want to recognize you. We have a gift for you. All right. Here comes a couple up here. All right. Here we go. And Sister Brenda, Brother Tommy. Okay. 
Boy, these two are worlds apart. <laughs> Brenda's a school teacher and Tommy's a truck driver. Now you tell me, that's what I mean when I say that, they're worlds apart. Hey, Brenda, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good? When was your birthday? Saturday. Saturday. Hey, Amen. Did you have a pretty good birthday? Yes, sir. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Get your phone calls? Yes, sir. You did. <laughs> I'm going to keep asking questions. Tommy, how was your birthday? Great, great. Good? Great. Yes, hey, Amen. Now, Ruth, didn't we, when you had your birthday, do something for you? And you... Okay, what did we give you? What did I give you? Gave you some money. Remember how much? $500. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. Tommy, there's yours. Okay, we always give a dollar away, but you and you and Ruth like to go out, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know how many I got. Oh, they got enough. Okay, okay, okay. How about that, Brenda? Hey, we can go several places. Okay, okay. Right, Look at there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I go to the blue. Here you go. Tommy said, all I, Tommy said, all I get is a dollar. <laughs> okay. See, Br Brenda's one of our widows. We like to do something special for them. Okay. I didn't know it was going to be like this, though. All right. Got <laughs> Wait a minute, Tommy. Wait a minute, Tommy. Oh boy, Tommy. Look at that. Look at that. I'm gonna give you all in ones, Tommy. How about that, Brenda? Appreciate it. Great. There must be at least it must be a a good I bit in there. I tell you what, Ruth and I always enjoy this. And we can usually go more than once. You can? Yeah, we always enjoy it. Either on Friday or Saturday. Thank you very much. You're yeah, sure we welcome. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> now we're going to do a birthday too. Okay, here we go. Brenda's a school teacher, and she's sure looking forward to summer. <laughs> Most teachers are. Somebody talked about going to school year-round, and teachers say, oh, no, let's don't do that. <laughs> All right, well, it's good to have a birthday, isn't it? I'm glad we can always do something a little special for the widows in the church. And uh, we try to anyway. Amen. All right, we're going to sing one more song and receive this morning's offering. And I trust you'll obey God in your giving. I sure appreciate it. Uh, those of you who give your tithes and your offerings and then you give extra for missions. And uh, we got a bunch of missionaries coming this next year. We are, we're booked up all the way through with a missionary every month, I believe, all the way through March of next year, I believe it is. And uh, it's okay, isn't it? Yes, sir. Let's, let's keep bringing them in. Amen. Oh, let's stand and sing another good song. Amen. All right, let's all stand once again. Turn to page 275, 275. We'll sing the first and last. It is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sheep bellow, Mom. 
Jesus, we are so thankful that you've blessed us beyond measure. And Father, I realize we do have some church families who may be right now going through a tough time financially, Lord, and we pray for them and ask you, Lord, to help them and pray, God, we could be a blessing to them. But we thank you, dear God, for the, the abundance of blessings you poured out upon us day in and day out. Now bless the remainder of the service and bless this offering. In thy name I pray, amen. I'll be in the book of Romans, chapter 3. We'll be reading from a few moments. Book of Romans, chapter 3. Praise the Lord. We got a room for great pianist, Miss Betty, hoping that she'll get use of that arm pretty soon so she can get back on the organ. And uh, if not, I'm going to play that organ. <laughs> She's thumbs up. That's not going to happen. In the book, uh, the book of Romans, uh, in chapter 3, uh, I'm going to read just a few moments before I read our scripture. And... Uh, I'm going to give you what we're going to preach on this morning. It's a word that we don't hear much about in our day and time. It's a great Bible word, a great meaning to it, and has a lot to do with our salvation. It's the word called justified. The word justified, okay? Can you say it after me? Say it, justified, okay? It's a great Bible word. It's a great Bible term. And uh, what does the word justified mean? Well, it means... Uh, to be seen as innocent, holy, and righteous. That's what the word justified means. It means to be seen as innocent, without, without fault, without guilt. To be seen as holy 
and to be seen as righteous, okay? So when, when, a, when a person calls upon Christ to save them, they become justified in the eyes of God, which means that in the eyes of God, if you're saved today, you are seen as innocent, holy, and righteous with no guilt whatsoever. That in the eyes of God, listen now, in the eyes of God the Father, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are as innocent as Jesus is. You are as righteous as Jesus is. And you are as holy as Jesus is. Now let me say this. In ourselves, even though we're saved, we are not as holy, we're not as holy as we should be. And we're not as righteous as we should be. As a matter of fact, uh, the apostle John tells us over in the book of 1 John, he said, if we say that we have no sin, the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we are still sinners, but in the eyes of God, we're justified. In other words, before we got saved, we were unjustified. Here in the book of Romans in chapter three, I'm gonna begin reading in verse nine. This is where we were before God saved us, starting in chapter three, verse nine. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have therefore proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You want to underline that in your Bible. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Now, these are words and verses that describe a person before they get saved. Verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, and their tongues, uh, with their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. That's, their, that's the way they talk. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Does that sound like humanity? Sure does, doesn't it? Uh, their feet are swift to shed blood. What happened down in, in Texas? You know why? Their feet are swift to shed blood. You know why? They, 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 blame, they blame guns, but it's not guns. It's the, it's the deceitfulness and sin that's in a person's heart. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is Now, here's the, here's the reason. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They don't care. Now, this is, this is humanity. This is us before we got saved. You said, Brother Baker, I wasn't quite that bad. Well, how bad you got to be to be lost? And now we know, now we know, verse 19, that what things soever the law saith, it said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world be, may become guilty before God. Notice those last four words, all the world may become guilty before God. Wow, isn't that something? And uh, we, we see that. Then uh, notice also down in verse 24. Uh, uh, it says, no, I'm sorry, not verse 24. Uh, yes, verse, verse uh, get my verses right here now. All right. Go over to chapter five now, not chapter three. Now that's where we were in chapter three. We get to chapter five, we find where we are after we get saved. Now we saw where we came from, didn't we, in chapter three. That's where we all came from. And this morning, if you're not saved, if, you're, if you've never been born again, I didn't ask you if you're a church member, that don't matter the hill of beans. If you've never been saved, if you've never had a life-changing experience with Jesus Christ, this is where you are right here. As a matter of fact, if you go over to chapter five, and, and uh, I mean chapter six, and verse number 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
So you're gonna die in your sins, end up in a place called hell. But in chapter five, five we find where we are in Christ. Verse one, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. And patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed uh, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Isn't that amazing? Boy, I thank God for that. And then it goes on down to verse nine. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Verse number 11. And not only, uh, not only also, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Go over to verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, watch this now, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one, by one, one man, Jesus Christ, hath, a, 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 hath abounded unto many. Verse number 17. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, that's Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, listen to this now, shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Notice that, that word one, verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, that's Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men under justification. For as one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, that's Adam, who were descendants of Adam's, so by the obedience of one, that's Jesus, shall many be made righteous. So we find here that where we came from and where we are, and now here we are in church, we sit here as a family of sinners that's been saved by the grace of God. Not only that, we are here and we are justified in the eyes of God. Now, sometimes we hear this word justification and you hear words like, you know, innocent and holy and righteous. Uh, folks get the idea, well, well, since I'm holy and righteous and since uh, my position is in Jesus Christ, I can about live and do what I want to do. I can sin and get by with it. I can live like this, live like that, and get by with it. That's not true at all. Matter of fact, that's the complete opposite. Because when you get saved and the Holy Spirit comes in your life and begins to move in your life, it, hey, the sinning part begins to take a back seat. Now, you'll never be sinless until you get to heaven. Say amen. amen. You will never be without sin until you get to heaven. You're gonna sin every day of your life. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna go to lay your head on your pillow at night and look back and say, well, I lived the day. I didn't do anything wrong today. No, I hate to tell you that, but that's not gonna happen. You are gonna sin. Now, you ought not enjoy sin. You ought not sin on purpose, but you still have a sinful nature about you. You still have a nature about you that the Bible calls the flesh. And as long as you live in this body of flesh, you will live and have to deal with sin in your life. Now, some folks sin more than others. I understand that. Some sins carry a greater weight than others. And there's the sins of omission and the sins of commission. The sins that you do that you should not do and the things that you don't do that you should do. For example, the sin of prayerlessness. You know what's a sin not to pray? Huh? The, the sin of unforgiveness. The sin of bitterness. I mean, we could go on and on and on and on uh, uh, picking out these sins and we ought to so try to live each day that when we, we want to be like David and say, God, search me and show me and let me know what's not right in my life, dear God, so that I can better serve you. But the average saved person doesn't live that way. Tragically and sadly, 
Most saved people do not live to honor God with their life. Now, when you hear that type of statement, you are to examine yourself and not anybody else. Because it's, all, it's awful easy for you to look at other people and see, and see things in their life that, that's, that's there that shouldn't be there or see things missing in their life. You'd say, boy, they need to be in church. And they should be. But the point is, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not, uh, before we got saved, we were, not, we were not innocent, we were guilty. Before we got saved, we were not holy, we were unholy. And before we got saved, we were not, we were not righteous, we were unrighteous. But now, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're justified. Justified. That means we are forgiven. We're no longer condemned. Outside the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never been saved, you're unforgiven. Your, sin, your sins are still upon you. Your sins are gonna condemn you. And if you die with your sins unforgiven, you'll die end up in a place called hell, the lake of fire. That is not the will of God. That is not what God wants for you. God sent his son Jesus to die for you. And that's why Paul is writing here. Matter of fact, if you read the book of Galatians, he goes on to say a whole lot more about this matter of being justified. He says twice, he said, no man is justified by the law. No man is justified and made holy before God by obeying the law of God. You know why that's true? Because you can't obey all the law of God. And the Bible says if you break one of God's law, you're guilty of breaking them all. Doesn't seem fair, but it's true. And so here we are justified. Now what does that mean? Well, because of one, thank God, because of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're justified. We're now justified in the eyes of God. And I want to, what I want to do basically by, with those thoughts there, I want to give you some benefits of justification. Some of the benefits of justification that are ours given to us by our Heavenly Father. And we find them here in Romans, excuse me, chapter five. We find, first of all, one of the benefits is this matter of peace. Look at verse one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm gonna tell you what, nothing is, uh, one, of the, one of the greatest benefits of being a child of God, one of the greatest benefits of being justified is having the peace of God and the peace with God. Now, you, like, before you get saved, you're not at peace with God. Sin, sin makes you the enemy of God. Now, God loves sinners, lost sinners. He died for lost sinners. But nobody, nobody can have peace with God only through the Lord Jesus Christ. People have the idea, by the millions have the idea that, that I can have the peace of God if, I, if I'm highly religious. Boy, if I go about doing good, if I, if I get involved in good charitable work and if I'm dedicated to a good church cause and if I do this and I do that, then I'm gonna have some peace. No, sir, I'm telling you, all the works of man will never give you the peace with God. You can only have. You see, if you're not careful, uh, you'll, you will think, in other words, you'll have peace with yourself because you're saying, you'll, you'll put your own righteousness on you. You will say to yourself, and you don't realize it's the devil, here's what you'll say to yourself. I, I, I'm okay because look what I'm doing. Look how many people I've helped. Look how generous I've been. Well, I must be okay. And the Bible says our works are, are as filthy rags. Our righteousness has filthy rags. And so we have the peace with God and the peace of God. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually say this and, and I say it all the time, I will repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Nothing is sweeter than having the peace of God. Preacher, what does that mean? That means when the devil, uh, when the devil haunts you with your past, when the devil comes to you and reminds you of what you've done and how you've lived and maybe what you're even doing, you can have the assurance that I, I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I, 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 I'm no longer the enemy of God and God can give you his peace. The Bible says it's a peace that passeth what? All understanding. The world doesn't have this peace. The world doesn't know about this peace. 
<laughs> we think about all these shootings that's been going on in the last, you know, 20, 20 to 25 years. It just didn't start, you know, okay? You know what's wrong? There's no peace in people's hearts. But when you, when you think about being justified and one of the benefits of that is having peace in your heart, having peace knowing I'm right with God and, 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 uh, and my God loves me and everything's all right in my father's house. So you get the peace of God. The second thing I see here is found in verse 11. And not only so, but we also, what? Joy in the Lord. We joy in the Lord. In other words, another benefit of justification is joy. Joy in God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. The joy of the Lord is my what? Strength. You see, there's something about this matter of joy. <laughs> you can be happy and not have joy. You see, happiness and joy, uh, you can have happiness and not have joy. Now, here's happiness. Happiness is based on, on circumstances and based on stuff. Why? Why I'm happy because I'm not sick. I'm happy because, I, boy, I can pay my bills. I'm happy and I, I've got this and I've got that. I'm happy. I got some friends. And so happiness is brought about because of the good things in your life. Okay. Lost people are happy every day. I said, unsaved people are happy every day. Happy. But now, you let things go sour in their life, you let things go downhill in their life, and they get bitter. They get angry. They get violent. Happiness leaves. But now, for a child of God, you can have both. You can have happiness, and you can have joy. Joy is within. Joy is, a, is, a, is an emotion that comes to you from the Holy Ghost of God that dwells in you that God wants to give you so that when everything in your life seems to fall apart, you can have the joy of the Lord. Not the joy of the church, not the joy of the preacher, not the joy of somebody, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey, that joy does not, joy does not do away with heartache. Joy does not do away with burdens. Joy does not do away with sorrow. Joy is there to help you get through your sorrow, to help you deal with your heartache, to help you strengthen you with your burdens. Miss Steele was up here a few moments ago, one of our widows, and I will not elaborate on what she went through 40, almost 41 years ago, but I'm gonna tell you it was a horrible event in her life. And boy, when, when her husband went to be with the Lord and all that, it was, it was just a tragic thing and, and boy, and Brenda cried and we all cried and wept. My soul. But you know what? I watched her. And I'm telling you, I marveled at her strength. I marveled at her, at, at, at her spiritual stamina. How could she do that? How could she withstand? I mean, we had a funeral service here for a husband and then traveled to Tennessee and had another one. One funeral's tough enough, but two? In a matter of just a few days. Some of her family said, Brenda, how, how, how are you going through this? How are you, how, how, how are you so stable? Are you on some type of medication? She said, No. Underneath, underneath that burden and that sorrow and that heartache was the peace of God and the joy of the Lord. Amen? So joy, joy is for the believer. Joy can see you through. Joy can be yours. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Bible speaks about the joy of Jesus. And so we have joy. We have peace because of this matter of justification. Number three, notice in, uh, in, in verse three, the third thing, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. So uh, this, this matter of patience comes as a benefit of being justified. Patience. Oh my goodness. 
How much patience do you have? Let's take a survey. I could say, all you kids whose parents are patient, raise your hand. I don't know, I better not do that. All you, all you husbands who's, that have wives that are patient, raise your hand. All, all you wives who have husbands who are patient, raise your hand. I got news for you. Patience is a great virtue, but it's not found too much. But now, but because you've been justified, in other words, you're holy in God's eyes, you're pure in God's eyes, you're righteous in God's eyes. Guess what? We get this thing called patience. And I got news for you, it's missing in most saved people's lives. People say, well, you know, uh, talking about the patience of Job. I don't want the patience of Job. I want the patience of Jesus. Now, Job was a patient man, but nobody's more patient than Jesus. And so you have patience. Now, think about this. Patience during your trials and tribulations. That's what he's talking about. Patience as you go through the trials and tribulations of life. Patience as you go through uh, those heartaches and those troubles and those sorrows. Patience as you, as you wait on God. Patience as God, God gives you. And you say, and God says, just be patient. You see, when you get in a hurry, you make matters a whole lot worse. When you take things into your own hands, you can do some great damage. That's why Job, he didn't, he didn't say a whole, Job didn't do anything. His uh, so-called three friends came to him, accused him, and Job just said, hey, fellas, I don't know what you're talking about. And Job just sat there and waited on God, and God doubled him, doubled what he had before. So patience during your trials and tribulations. Patience as you wait on God. And then number four, I see this in, in, uh, in verse two and verse four and five. And it's called hope. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and there and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Look at verse four and five. And patience and experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. Hope. Being justified means that you, you have a hope. You have a hope the world does not have. You have a hope. Now, school is fixing to end out for the kids in school. You kids are glad for school be letting out? Some of you are anyway. Boy, oh, hey. Oh, boy, when I was in school, I couldn't wait. They say, and, and you waited for school to get out. But now listen, listen. When I was a kid growing up, I went to school, and you get something, you got it about every six weeks. It was called a what? A report card. And on that report card, you, you had a grade, you know, I don't know how it is today. You got a, uh, back then we had like a, a E for excellence. I didn't get any E's. G for good and stone down the road. Then you got in high school, you got A's, B's, and C's and all that. And, uh, but when you were in school, you got a report card. And when I was uh, all the way up through the sixth grade, when you got that final report card on there on the back, it would say, have your name. You have been, you have been promoted to the, if you was in the third grade, it would be promoted to the fourth grade. Now you see, when I was in school, I hoped that I would be promoted on the, to the next grade. In other words, looking at my grades, it, it, it wasn't much of a hope there. I mean, it was, I was hanging on by a thread, okay? Huh? You hoped, question mark. Oh, I hope. Sometimes Miss Baker, she won't keep an eye on that gas, that gas knob in the car. And I say, you got any gas in your car? She says, I don't know. She says, I hope I got enough to get to the gas station. <laughs> so I'm having to do a little better job than that, keeping an eye on myself. I hope I can do it. Now, that's not the Bible hope. The hope the Bible speaks of is a surety. It's a guarantee. There's no question mark after it. The Bible calls it a sure hope. The Bible calls it a blessed hope. Amen? Amen. The Bible calls it a guaranteed assurance. So being justified means you have a sure hope. 
a steadfast hope, a blessed hope. So as we gather here this morning, as people of God, and, and if you're not saved, you need to get saved, you can have this hope. So I said, well, I, I hope things are gonna get better. Well, they may not. Matter of fact, I hate to tell you this, they're not gonna get better. Where do you get that from, preacher? From the Bible. The Bible says in the last days it will wax worse and worse. It's going to get worse. But as we see it get worse, we don't say, well, glory to God, it's going to get worse. Whoopee! We don't do that. But we can say this. We can have this peace of God and this joy of the Lord and this patience. We can say, we can say yes, it's going to get worse. Yes, things are will not be what they should be. But I know the Lord and I know him and because of him, he's gonna watch over me and he's gonna guide me. He's in control. He knows what's going on. He's assigned this. Hey, the world is gonna end one day. Hey, we're gonna go to heaven one day. Matter of fact, the only way to get to heaven is to die or for Jesus to come back. Isn't that a good hope? Dr. John R. Rice said one time he was preaching a campaign down in Texas and one day he come out of a, a, a local restaurant or something and he came down a walkway and a guy jumped out of the alley and pulled a gun on him or a knife and, and said, give me all your money or I'll kill you. And John R. Rice says, you ain't gonna threaten me with heaven. <laughs> In other words, we have a blessed hope. Brother Dean's back there and just a couple of weeks, two or three, a few weeks ago, his wife uh, graduated to heaven, amen? She didn't die, she graduated to heaven. Isn't that a blessing? Sure hope, definite hope. That's our hope. And though the world is falling apart and we know it's gonna be like that, we can hold our head high and we have the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, and the patience we need. And we say, my hope is in Christ. My hope is in this Bible. My hope is in, is in, in the Lord Jesus Christ who redeemed me and saved me. He knows what's going on. His hand is on everything. Is his hand on your life? I can put my head on my pillow tonight and say, you know what? I can sleep in peace because if I die in my sleep, I'll wake up in glory. Amen. Whoopee. Hope. Sure hope. Blessed hope. Steadfast hope. How is this possible, Brother Baker? What, what made this? How, how are we justified? Well, who's responsible? Well, the answer is in verse two. By whom also we have access by faith into this what? Grace into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We stand in the grace of God. Amen, amen. I stand here this morning and you sit there in that pew this morning and we're here, we're saved by the grace of God, we're kept saved by the grace of God and this justification that we've received from God is all God's amazing grace, amen? Woohoo! I can't wait. Amen. I can't wait to get to glory. But until we get there, it's going to be amazing grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, the song talks about. We can have the peace of God and the joy of the Lord and the patience of God and have a sure hope in our heart because of God's amazing grace. Wow. Justified. You've heard this statement. You've heard this definition. It bears repeating. Uh, in other words, justified, break it down. In God's eyes, I'm justified just as if I'd never sinned. See, when you get saved and God sees you, it's just as if you have never sinned. I like the way that song begins. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Wonder how he could love me, a sinner, condemned, unclean. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful. This morning, are you saved? Is your name written down the Lamb's book of life? Are you still under the condemnation of sin? When did you call upon Christ and be saved? I didn't ask you when you joined the church or when you got baptized. That don't mean anything until after you get saved. Don't trust that. 
Your trust, your trust cannot be in a church membership. Your trust cannot be in good works or obeying this and that. Your trust must be in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone and nothing else. That's how you get justified. We're justified by that one he spoke about, by one man, by one man, by one man, and by that one man's blood. I'm now justified in the eyes of, in the eyes of God. What about you this morning? I'm going to ask Miss Ruth to come to the piano. Before she plays, though, there's a, there's a song. I've asked the PA man to play, and when it finishes, Ruth will continue playing. <clears throat> This song has to do with never standing alone. Sometimes you feel like you're standing alone, don't you? Sometimes you're thinking, boy, am I gonna get through this? Am I gonna make it through this? Well, if you're justified and you have, you can make it. Claim his joy, claim his, claim his peace. Ask him to give you patience. Put your hope in God. You'll never stand alone. That's the name of this song, where no man stands alone. And uh, let's bow for prayer, and then we'll stand to our feet, and the song will be played, and then Miss, Miss Ruth will play the invitation. Let's bow our heads. Father, I'm sure glad I'm justified this morning. I remember before I got saved, I was lost, condemned, Thought I, was, thought I was a good old boy, but didn't realize how lost I really was. I believe there's somebody here this morning, dear Lord, who, who is in that condition. I pray God for them, that whoever she is or he is, that even right now, you're speaking to them about being saved. And Lord, I pray that they will in just a few moments when we stand to our feet. I pray, dear God, that you'll give them, you'll give them Lord, the faith they need to be saved and they'll step out and come and say, preacher, I need to be saved. I want to be saved. And Lord, I'd love to take the Bible and show them how to be saved. But God, I pray for those this morning who are here who are saved. Lord, no doubt some of them are going through a tough time right now, difficult times in their life, with maybe with their health, their finances, a thousand other things, dear God, in their life. God, I pray they'll trust you and look to you with a sure hope. Please, God, bless this invitation. May this song speak to some hearts today. In thy name I pray, amen. Let's stand to our feet. It's bound that God speak to your heart. Altars open if you want to come. Be saved, my man. Once I stood in the night with my head bowed low in the darkness as black as could be be saved today would you come Christian, and come my and heart felt alone find a place in this altar and i cried oh lord don't hide your face from me Hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to the grave. Like a king, I may live in a palace so tall, with great riches to call my own. But I don't know a thing in this whole wide world that's worse than being alone. Hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to
never stand alone it's impossible after you get saved you'll never be alone he'll be there with you loneliness is a horrible thing a lot of lonely people in the world Right now you may be have lots of friends, a lot going on in your life, but down the road somewhere, you're gonna need the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Miss Ruth. Praise the Lord. Well, it's been a good morning, hasn't it? If you're glad you've been justified, say amen. amen. Oh, I'm glad I've been justified. Amen. I hope to be back tonight around 6.30. We'll choir practice at five and they'll quit around six and we'll start at 6.30. Hope you'll be here for that. Wednesday at seven o'clock. Always a good crowd here. Hope you kids will have a good time in school. You got about a couple of weeks left, some of you. And, uh, and uh, that's exciting, isn't it? It was for me when I was a kid. Couldn't wait to school to get out and it won't never start back up again. But anyway, now I wish I was back in school. All right. Amen. Brian, would you dismiss us for prayer?